Plants on planks are quickly gaining in popularity as essentially they are a no mess, low maintenance version of the moss pole, yet they still achieve the end result of getting those large mature leaves. So are they really the same as a moss pole? No, no they're not. While they achieve the same result, they function completely differently. Now there may be many reasons as to why someone would choose one method over the other. One of them being aesthetics. Uh, someone might not like the way a moss pole looks and prefer the wood or the natural wood plank. Also cost is another major issue as moss itself can be fairly expensive. So what really makes them different? I'm gonna talk about this as well as I'm gonna set up some fresh cuttings on a plank just to show you how to set it up properly. I'm also gonna repot one here as well. So let's get into it. When it comes to moss poles, and I'm gonna use my philodendron Tahiti here as an example, the pole itself acts not only as a support system, but it's also an extension of the growing medium itself. The aerial roots grow into the moss, obtaining moisture and nutrients. I know a lot of people will uh, water from the top down as well as add a nutrient rich solution in there. So that's how these plants grow. And typically they don't need a large pot because they're not entirely relying on the root system in the pot. There is also roots in the sphagnum moss. So it's just an extension of the growing medium. Now with the plank method, the main function of the air roots is to act as a support system. They will receive moisture from the ambient air um, if the humidity is quite high, but uh, the main goal is to latch onto a tree, uh, a rock, anything like that in order for the plant to grow upwards. I don't keep my planks like consistently wet. Every time that my plant needs water, I will spray down the plank, letting the water kind of drip down into the pot. If you are using the plants on plank method, just remember that the plant is probably relying heavily or quite heavily on the root system within the pot. So you might have to upsize it into a little bit larger pot compared to uh, if you had it on a moss pole. Uh, this one, the uh, Cebu Blue, you can see there are some roots growing out the bottom. So this one will need to be repotted here soon. There's another one, uh, one of my pothos plants that I have to upsize into a larger pot. I have two different cuttings that I'm gonna put on planks today. This is a global green pothos, which I've been rooting in water for a, a number of weeks. And then I also have a philodendron glorious that is uh, in moss currently. So I'm gonna take it out of the moss. I'm gonna put it in an aeroid mix, but I'm gonna show you how to attach these plants, the philodendrons, as well as the pothos to a wood plank. There are a number of different methods of securing it to the plank. I've been using the clear packing tape recently. It just allows for the aerial roots to be secured um, firmly against the back of the board. Whereas if you use the plant wire or even the Velcro, it gets it close, but sometimes there can be a little bit of wiggle room. So I find uh, the best way to get contact with the roots on the board is the packing tape. I just picked out a pot that will accommodate the size or the width of the plank. It doesn't completely reach the bottom, but that is okay. Now, the first thing you wanna do before you attach it to the plank is find the front of the plant. With this pothos plant, as it grows, it has alternating leaves. So you can see it'll get one leaf on the left, the next one will be on the right, and it'll continue to do that kind of shingling pattern as it grows up. So this section right here, where you have the petiole against the stem, this will be the front of the plant. And if you flip the cutting around, you can see there are a number of larger and smaller aerial roots. So of course that is the back and this is the portion that you want up against the plank. I'm gonna place the cutting on the plank here first as it'll be much easier to pot it up um, when it is already secured in the pot. So I'm gonna take my clear packing tape. I'm just gonna put it on the back side of the leaf. So for the first node, I'm going to push firmly against the plank and I want it to be completely straight. So I'm gonna kind of snake that down a little bit and then I'm just going to position it like that. I'm gonna put the tape around to the back like so and then just do the same for the next one. I have already put the piece of tape back there. I'm gonna push the node against the board and then just wrap it around. And then for this one as well, and then just wrapping it around. So it looks like that. Okay, now the cutting is on the plank and I'm just gonna use a combination 
of uh, Promix's Tropical Plant Mix as well as their Orchid Bark. Just makes for a really well draining soil mixture. Now, all you have to do is place the plank in the container, push it down firmly, and then just add your soil. Just making sure that this uh, plank remains straight as I'm adding soil. And I'm just gonna use my pencil to poke down the uh, soil just so it can fill in the air gaps. I'm gonna give this some water as well. Um, anytime you have a plant that has been propagated in water and you put it into soil or you transfer it to soil, just make sure that the soil doesn't dry out. You don't want those water roots drying up, otherwise the plant will not survive. So keep it uh, well watered for about two weeks and then just slowly cut back on your watering each time you water until you get to a regular watering routine for this specific plant. So this is a pothos. I let mine dry out completely. Okay, so I'm just gonna pack that down. It's remaining upright by itself. I'm gonna pack down the back here as well, just making sure that it is secure and stable. And then the next step is to give it some water. Here's my little portable plant shower, which I made specifically for my plants on planks so I don't have to take them over to the bathroom and spray them off every time they need to be watered. Uh, I just have a little pump action spray bottle and this is just a, a plastic tub and then I fabricated uh, some little shower walls. Um, just It's out of foam board from like the dollar store. So this is how I water my planks and I just spray it down. I spray the plank, let it drip down into the soil. And this one, I'm going to water the soil here as well. Whenever I use a new terracotta pot, I like to spray off the pot because watch how fast that water will absorb in the pot. That's crazy, it's dry already. So I like to spray off the pot the plank and the soil, just so it's thoroughly watered. These little shower backboards prevent any overspray, of course, onto the floor or my surrounding walls. And it just saves me on so much time uh, moving all of my planks, because there's a whole bunch of them back and forth uh, to the bathroom to spray them off. Now, before I get to the Philodendron Glorious, I'm going to be repotting my favorite plant on plank or my favorite plant on plank. This is the Marble Queen Pothos. And this newest leaf, or the newest leaves, they're massive, but they're just absolutely gorgeous. I can't get over the uh, variegation on these leaves. So this one, it makes me a little bit nervous because I've never repotted this one yet. It's just in a small little terracotta and it's got some roots poking out the bottom here as well. So I'm going to be upsizing it uh, quite a bit into this larger orchid pot. I wanna keep an eye on the roots. I like watching root growth. So a clear orchid pot is what I'm going to be putting it in or placing it in. Now, I have, whoops, I have repotted a couple other plants on planks recently. And what I did is I just went around the edge of the pot, uh, loosening up the soil. I'm trying to keep the soil, the, uh, the plant and the, uh, uh, the plank kind of intact. There is only one support tie or a Velcro tie just at the bottom. Otherwise it has trained itself to grow up the plank unsupported. I have not had to add any tape or anything to, uh, to keep it attached to the board. So I think I'm actually going to add a, a safety support onto that. I'm gonna get a Velcro tie just to uh, keep it supported so that the top doesn't uh, just flop off. All right, those safety supports are on. I'm just gonna loosen it up now. This one makes me a little bit nervous. Sometimes a good bang can do it as well. Okay, yep, it worked. So everything came out intact. And look at these roots. That is root bound. I do get some questions about the plank uh, being in the soil and if it rots. This is pine. This is probably the worst type of wood to use inside of a pot and you water it and all that kind of stuff. I'll show you an example here in a second of one that's been in for like months. There's no rot or anything like that. This plant will definitely outgrow the plank before the plank rots. If you are worried about rot, then you can use a cedar plank, which is actually what I used for my uh, Global Green Pothos there. It's actually a repurposed piece of wood. Um, my kids had a cedar playhouse, which we 
uh, destroyed and I managed to save a number of the planks for my plants. So that is a, a cedar uh, plank, which is good for um, rot resistant. It doesn't mold or anything like that. I'll be using the same soil mixture for this plant. I'm just going to size it up here first. I just put a little bit of soil in the bottom. Might actually just loosen this up. Look at these roots. Holy smokes. Okay, that is one solid root ball. I'm not gonna mess with the roots too much as I don't want the plant to go in any sort of shock. So I'm gonna place the plank close or as close to the back as I can. And then I'm just gonna dump in all the new fresh soil. You don't have to fertilize as well because most commercial potting soils will say right on the package that it uh, feeds up to, I think it's typically three months. So you don't have to add in any extra fertilizer into your soil mixtures. Let's turn this around, add a little bit of soil into the back. And again, I'm gonna use my pencil to poke down the soil in any air gaps, filling in any air gaps there. I'm also gonna give this one some water as it's absolutely bone dry. And then I'll put it back underneath its grow lights. And now same thing with this one. I like to spray off the plants in the little plant shower here, uh, not only to clean off the dust and debris, but also spray off any pests like spider mites or that sort of thing. Not only is it really good at uh, watering your plants and the plank, but it's also good at cleaning and uh, I guess spraying off any pests that might be on there as well. I just can't get over the variegation on this plant. And this is just your cheap old uh, Marble Queen Potho. So you can pick up from any big box store and it's turned into such a gorgeous plant. This is probably, well, it's not probably, this is my favorite uh, plant on plank right now. I'm glad it went smooth. Everything went really well. I'm happy with the repotting process. Okay, now I'm just gonna quickly do the same thing with the Glorious here. You can see it has a main stem. It's got like, a root coming out of here. I thought it was gonna have a larger root system than it does, but that's okay. So I'm going to place the cutting again, just like the other ones, firmly against the board. You can see here's all the aerial roots at the back. And I think for this one, because it is so small, um, the cutting itself, I'm actually going to be using the Velcro tie. And once it starts to grow up the plank, then I can add the tape as a support system. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. This green portion is the soft velvet kind of fabric, which goes against the plant. And then the um, prickly Velcro piece uh, goes away from the plant so it doesn't damage any of the stem. This is just cheap dollar store stuff. So in fact, the green should be on the outside, but I want the Velcro on the outside. So I'm just gonna place that right there, kind of cinch that up firmly against the plank as tight as I can go and then secure it at the back. I'm going to do another one just at the top here. Again, so those area roots can come in contact or direct contact with the wood. So I'm just going to kind of slide that up there, placing it right over top of the node. There's a node right there and do the same thing. Just going to push firmly. This one's a little bit longer, so I'm gonna have to cut this off. Like that. And now it is secured. So I made a little mistake with this one, just because this cutting is so small, and if I put it in the pot like this, the cutting itself is gonna to be too deep. So I just have to slide this up just a little bit. So I have one secure it on there. So that looks a little bit better. I'm just gonna slide that up just a little bit more. Now for this one, I'm gonna use probably a bit more of the orchid mix. I want a really well-draining mixture. I don't want much of that soil. So I'm just gonna dump this in. And then again, I'm gonna give this one a good thorough watering and hopefully it acclimates to uh, the new setup here from the moss. I'm gonna put a little bit of soil at the back just so the, the pole can be a little bit more stable. There, now it's remaining upright. 
on its own. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more into the front of the cutting here. And then just lightly pack it down. So now all I have to do is give it some water, but I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it useful and helpful and I hope you can apply it to your house plans. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Thanks for watching this video. If you wanna watch another house plan video, click this one right here. Thanks again for watching, bye.